Bear with me a minute. We're going to try to get some electricity up here. Anybody know anything about electricity? It's shocking. It's shocking. <laughs>
Well, we're the backyard Dixie Jazz Stompers. We, we do apologize for all the electrical problems, and I'm not an electrician, but I used to be a truck driver. It's the best I could do. Anyway, we're going to close out our little session here with uh, the Washington Lee Swing. This is the uh, old the old fight song from the old Huntington High School on 8th Street. And uh, so we're going to... And the CKs too. Well, the CKs too. And that's the... That, 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 that little good gentleman sitting over there, Claire Hester, used to be a band director. Till eventually? Oh, God, it is. Okay. Well, this is a fight song for a lot of school. So this is the Washington Lee Swing. Thank you all for listening to us and sitting up with a crazy be sure to stick around and listen to some good music from the radio and the symphonic band. Well, hey, 
afternoon. Thank goodness the rain has stopped. We got sunshine and we got a concert. I'm Bill Cornwell and I'll be uh, your narrator for some of our tunes this afternoon. We thank you for joining us here in Central City for our Salute to America. To start the concert, we head to the movies for our next selection. It's Alan Silvestri's familiar theme to the recent Marvel Captain America movies. This is the Captain America March. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to introduce our musical director for the Greater Huntington Symphonic Band, Mr. Matt Chaffins. And he's a newlywed, so even better. Next, we present a piece played by 70 orchestras and bands around the nation and the world. It is Aaron Copeland's Fanfare for the Common Man. It was written in 1942 for a group not far from us, the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra under conductor Eugene Goosens. It was inspired in part by a speech that had been made earlier that year by United States Vice President Henry Wallace, in which Wallace proclaimed the dawning of the century of the common man. This is Fanfare for the Common Man by Aaron Copeland. American composer Morton Gould incorporated the familiar American song when Johnny comes marching home again into our next selection, but he presents the tune in very different rhythmic styles. This is Morton Gould's American Salute. Thank you. 
Chapin. And if you're a veteran of one of these service branches, when we play your song, please stand and be saluted.
a medley of songs that are synonymous with the Union cause during the Civil War. First is the Battle Cry of Freedom, which was composed in 1862 by George Frederick Root, followed by Kingdom Coming, written by Henry C. Work, also in 1862. This arrangement is by Dan Wolbert and will be conducted by Vernon Barnum. This is the Battle Cry of Freedom and Kingdom Piece, which tells a story on February 3rd, 1943, the troop ship SS Dorchester was torpedoed and sunk by a German U-boat off Newfoundland in the North Atlantic. As the ship went down and soldiers scrambled overboard seeking rescue, four chaplains helped soldiers board lifeboats and gave up their own life jackets when the supply ran out. The chaplains joined arms, said prayers, and sang hymns as they went down with the ship, those chaplains were Methodist minister George L. Fox, Reform Rabbi Alexander D. Good, Roman Catholic priest Father John P. Washington, and Reformed Church in America minister Clark D. Poling. Composer James Swearingen remembers the sacrifice of these men and so many others with this work using the familiar God of our fathers as a theme and basis. This is the light eternal, and it'll be conducted by Tommy Thompson.
it can't be a patriotic concert without a march. And it's time for a march, and this is one of the best. We hope you enjoy E.E. E. Bagley's familiar national emblem march. and major recorded hit from 1984, God Bless the USA. Now this arrangement is in a bit of a different setting by Roger Holmes. Enjoy God Bless the USA. Forgot to mention we also have a soloist on this song, Wendy Wilson.
One of the standards of American patriotic songs is America the Beautiful, composed by Catherine Bates and Samuel Augustus Ward. Bates wrote the lyrics in the form of a poem in 1895, and Ward wrote the music for another setting three years earlier, but poem and music finally came together in 1910. This is arranged by Carmen Dragon. This is America the Beautiful. Thank you all for coming out and I hope you all have enjoyed it. 